40 people? So far, <clears> but uh, <throat> more might trickle in. Yeah, 46. Yeah. Hello, everyone. We're just going to let everyone uh, get settled in and turn on their audios before we start. Awesome. So hello, everybody. We hope you've been enjoying our day of education so far. So now it's time for our last education presentation of the day, presented by our very own Mark Eversfield, who is our market research analyst at Small Business BC. So before we start, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, I'd just like to remind everyone that after Mark's presentation, we will have a breakout session where Mark can answer any specific questions that you may have. Um, if you have any general questions for Mark's presentation, you can send them in our chat. So um, there is a Q&A button on the top right of your chat. So you can pop any of your questions in there. We will address these questions in the last 10-ish minutes of today's presentation. Um, today's presentation will be recorded and we will share these recordings with you after the event. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass our final presentation of the day to Mark. Great, thanks, Nicole. Everybody can hear me okay? That's wonderful. Um, yeah, welcome to the last event. Uh, one of the, I was telling Nicole, one of the advantages of being last is that you get to pick up on all the information that's happened in the day and you can relate it to uh, what I'm about to talk to uh, you about today. So uh, it's kind of nice. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, uh, market research in a COVID world. Uh, and I was telling Nicole there that uh, it's totally different than your regular market research. COVID has really changed the game. Uh, for market research. So what are we going to talk about today? Obviously, how COVID-19 has impacted our lives, some stats around that. It'll be primarily stats uh, driven for this. I come from economics and statistics from UVic, through BC Stats, through market research firm, and uh, over here to Small Business BC. So how has it impacted our lives? Uh, how do I research my market in a COVID world? That's both starting up and existing businesses. Uh, what are the Canadian sentiments and behaviors around uh, the pandemic uh, and how, how is that changing? We'll talk about that. that uh, buying patterns obviously have changed uh, as a result of COVID. And where are the opportunities? Uh, because when any disruption comes along, there are winners and losers. Uh, there are uh, uh, disadvantages and opportunities that uh, arise. And I'll also talk about, give you some tips and resources for market research and how to stay on top of what's happening in this ever fast changing world here. The basic, for, I'm gonna start off with a poll question. Uh, the basic process or the basic definition of a market research is uh, the process of collecting, analyzing, interpreting data about customers, competitors, and the business environment uh, to improve marketing effectiveness. So I'm going to ask you through the chat to indicate yes or no uh, if you know the difference between primary and secondary market research. Let me know. I want to get a gauge on how sophisticated uh, you guys are for the market research and how quickly and fast I can go or whether I should uh, be more in depth and take my time here. Okay, so how has COVID impacted our lives here? So obviously it's changed uh, the way people are living and therefore the way they consume. Uh, what are the impacts on people's consumption in that case? And especially things like uh, people are spending much more time at home, working from home, 32% uh, as of April of this year uh, versus 4% as of 2016. So huge difference in the way. So that has impacts in terms of What's going to happen with the urban core? Will I still want to have my business located in the urban core? Or are more, more neighborhood demographics and statistics going to be important for me to set up shop in the suburbs versus the urban core? So that's huge in terms of the way that shift is going on with the technology and so forth. And those working from home will have a lot more to spend. So here's the shocking stat that I'm going to tell you that I... I gave this at the dinner table last night and it was just total silence. Like people would not believe me when I told them this stat. Here's the stat. Canadian household savings in 2019 were 18 billion. 
the next year, they were 212 billion. Huge amount of savings that went, that went on. And Canada exceeds all other countries uh, in terms of the savings uh, ratio of, of GDP. That's $194 billion of savings, increase in savings sitting there waiting to be spent. Uh, so huge in terms of Canada's and how Canada is going to react to a recovery uh, has huge implications uh, for that. Um, and as changes produces uh, challenges and opportunities, um, the market research gives you, uh, especially primary market research, I mean, uh, in the other sessions, the panel sessions that you saw there, people were talking about uh, their score, uh, their satisfaction score for their clients. Uh, it's one thing, well, gee, if, if I know whether uh, my satisfaction, if I've got a high satisfaction score, do I just say that's fine? No, I keep going the way I'm going. No, you need a little more information. Like, why do they think you're so great? And so you want to have that uh, research around the emotional needs of your target market on an ongoing basis for even the exist for the existing businesses as well. So you can see opportunities for improvement and be aware of any speed bumps or potholes that are coming at you uh, in the future through that primary market research. And as I mentioned in COVID, the timeliness of the data becomes critical. Uh, so some of the stats I was listening to was for 2019. That under normal circumstances, that would be okay. But under a COVID world, that's ancient history. Uh, COVID is talking about weekly. Uh, rather than monthly or quarterly or yearly. Uh, so it's huge in terms of getting the latest information uh, to get an idea of the consumer's confidence. Uh, how should I react? You know, a lot of the media talks about in the wake of COVID. Have you ever heard of a variant? Uh, I don't know what kind of wake they're talking about as though it's in past tense. No, we're still, we don't know what's to come down the road as well. Um, and so concerns about COVID data, as I mentioned, what happened in two weeks ago can be significant. And I'll show you some of the charts that we're talking about here. Uh, so important things to know is when the data was gathered, uh, not published, but when it was gathered, uh, where was it gathered from? Like one earlier example was from the U.S. U.S. is completely different in some certain regards to uh, co under COVID conditions. Under normal conditions, it's okay. But under COVID conditions, it really reveals a totally different approach uh, as we see, I'll show you in, in other charts as well. Uh, does it come from US, Canada or the world? And what kind of sample are we talking about here? Is it just uh, 20 or 30 companies or is it 1200 uh, companies that we're talking about uh, in the way that uh, they've gone around uh, to ask their questions and their sample size? Uh, that they're dealing with. Really important to know that. So here's your fir my first example, how timely it is. We're talking about on a weekly basis. This is the last, the last one available is for, what is it, uh, uh, September 30th, uh, or sorry, July 30th, uh, uh, 2021. That was the latest that I could get on that one, July 30th. Um, and so here we see a big, the gray is the concern over COVID. And we can see it dropping down. But you can see the undulations on a weekly basis here. Um, boy, I've got ghosts in my machines here. Um, and so we can see that on a, a weekly basis, the changes that have gone on. The gray, uh, red is the healthcare, blue is the jobs and the economy, green is the environment, uh, light blue is the deficit there. So you can see how much greater COVID is, even with the vaccine that we have happening here and, uh, and all, there is the source and the survey size and the error rate that's involved in this uh, sample, for example. And then also we've got the one year trend line. So the 50% is uh, back in, um, uh, the 50% as actually uh, the, um, for the um, pre-COVID in the January, February period of pre-COVID versus today. So anything above that red line, their outlook about the, um, their outlook about job security, economic strength and real estate value 
is better than it was then. So uh, that's really, and so you wouldn't believe the, these charts given all the news media, because if it bleeds, it leads. And so we really get a distorted view of what's going on. And that's why we use market research to find out what's going on versus what we think is going on. A really big difference. And you can see here July strong footing for the household expenditures is going on here. Uh, you can see the uh, light, light, like uh, uh, olive color here, light olive color 2019 is pre-COVID. Uh, uh, and uh, we've got the orange here at 2020 and then the blue here at 2021. So we're still doing, and 100% is again that period, uh, February uh, in 2020. Uh, so that's pretty good in terms of being above uh, that, that uh, time. Yeah. So we can see uh, spending is still strong uh, going on here. Another source of information uh, are global uh, community uh, reports uh, from uh, uh, Google. And what happens here is that uh, on a weekly basis, they're tracking where people's phones are moving. Uh, compared to the period uh, of 2019 uh, before uh, COVID. And so we've got parks and retail recreation here for BC. This is for BC on a whole. And we can see retail and recreation is about the same now as what it was back pre-COVID. Pharmacies were, and groceries and pharmacies were, have always been up and now they're coming down a bit more than, they're coming close to what they were pre-COVID. Uh, parks are starting to come down. They were in the 150s to 200% over what uh, COVID was because people weren't going into the office. They were in their local, uh, visiting their local parks and getting their fresh air that way from their, uh, on their breaks uh, with their home. I, I remember our, just, I walked by my neighbors and they say, oh, you're, you've got time off. And she goes, no, I'm just on my coffee break. You know, so getting out and, uh, and walking and visiting local parks. Uh, transit stations, this is a function of getting back to work as well. You see here on the Thursdays or the Fridays, uh, uh, they're much more closer to what they were pre-COVID. And then as you get in through it the week, most people are at home. So, but it's still, it's down now to minus 27%. I'll show you some changes on these different stats, it, just within a couple months, how they change so much. Uh, and then workplaces, they're starting, used to be, they were down 50%, 100% from what they were pre-COVID. Uh, and so now they're back, they're back closer to what they were pre-COVID. And then residential walking around, they're not as much uh, walking around as they used to be staying at home because they're now going back into the office. That was BC versus we can do the look at the same stats for Metro Vancouver. Uh, on the different types of uh, activities that people are getting up to and how the vaccines and the variants affect uh, these different uh, variables. This is an example of just between April and September, we see the changes that are going on uh, in the different uh, areas. So for example, in Metro Vancouver, uh, retail and recreation used to be 24% down from what it was pre-COVID. Now it's only 6% down from what is pre-COVID. As I said, grocery and pharmacy, they've always been up. Uh, parks are starting to decline there. Transit stations now, they're getting more busy. Uh, and, but this is on a monthly basis that we can talk about this, uh, on a weekly basis that we can talk about this. Uh, residential as well down. Uh, so this is the type of changes that are going on in a COVID situation that would not normally be all that uh, critical, but it is in a COVID situation to find out what's going on. So here's the big difference in the way Canada has responded to the, uh, to the pandemic in that we have the highest vaccination rate of all G7 countries at uh, close to 68% as of September 8th, 2021. Um, that's the latest that I could get for this, for example. Now, what about, um, oh, what a, before I go there, let me just, um, let me just, um, do something here. This is something that, so, I mean, this morning, for example, I, I, I'll talk about one of these resources in a minute. This morning, I got in my mailbox a couple of uh, emails, one from Think, Think Google Canada that had a, uh, 
that had a great story on how our behavior is expected to change with this upcoming season. And I started to look into it and I thought, oh, great. And I started to talk about um, 35% are not going into stores this, uh, uh, no, 35% are, 35% are not going into stores for uh, they plan on not going to stores this Christmas versus 50% last year. So I thought, wow, that's great that people are getting more motivated. And then I read the details of the uh, survey and those were mainly US based, North our US based and US citizens. And so I thought, wow, that's not because there's under COVID conditions, US and Canada are quite different. And we can see this. This is one of the graphs that uh, I can't uh, this morning, for example, uh, spending across the different categories, Canada versus the rest of the world. Canada is much more conservative in what they are going to be spending uh, over the next versus the rest of the world. So they're much more conservative in their outlook. And so I thought to use those numbers um, was really, I didn't want to. I didn't want to use those numbers. Uh, so yeah, this is the Think Google, four ways the pandemic has changed shopping behaviors. Think Google, we'll talk about that later. It's a great uh, resource. Um, yeah, so lots of change going on. Uh, lots of change going on and Canada, it's, it's very important to get your geography and get your who you're talking about and the timeliness of it as well. So that's the uh, difference that Canada has uh, versus others. And this is from Statistics Canada, and it talks about online shopping in 2020. That's a good period of COVID spending on what's going on. And obviously, 82% uh, uh, online in 20 versus 73% a couple of years ago. Uh, and then Canadians spent the $84.5 billion versus $57.5 billion in 2018. And then also earlier, people were talking about, oh, which um, uh, social platform should I use? It's really critical to look at what age group, what, are they, what platform does the 25 to 44 year olds? You see here, the 25 to 44 year olds, 95% of them uh, were shopping online. Well, what platforms is that age group visiting most? And that's available. I do provide uh, uh, I do teach a seminar in market research where I, I have a chart mapped out of the different social media platforms by age group to illustrate how powerful uh, uh, informatics or, or graphics uh, are in uh, presenting information. Yeah, so that's really important here, Canadians uh, that, that shop online here. So obviously we know that's increasing, but we don't know how much and you see the billions of dollars. We still don't billions doesn't mean much to me in terms of that but it's still a lot of money another report that i came across this is from a canadian it didn't give me the sample size but it gave me november 20 uh, 2020 uh, was when this uh, survey was taken that was the quote the earliest that i could find on that it talked about changes in their shopping behavior 85 percent changed their shopping behavior uh, during COVID uh, from this uh, uh, survey from Reshift Media and how the pandemic has changed re uh, retail and buying behaviors. And you see here for these categories, buying online, it's pretty well expected, although furnishings, furnishings and households, they have increased. Uh, but you see 66% of those furnishing and households have also put it off. Uh, and the, hence, that's why we get the 208, uh, 218, or is it 212 uh, billion uh, dollars in savings because people are putting off a lot of these purchases. But nevertheless, they are using uh, that. But more importantly here in the next one, 50% are making online purchases for in-store items. So items that they could have, so obviously I can't go buy a Netflix movie, but I could go and buy a couch. And so in that case, uh, they are, 50% uh, are making those uh, in store. That's a huge chunk of, of people. So for clothing, for health and beauty products, uh, not so much for alcohol. That's alcohol and tobacco, that was an interesting one. I just saw an international study that had gone down, but in Canada, it's gone up. So it's an example of being careful of using stats because overall picture may seem one thing, but the segment that you're concerned may say something different. 
So alcohol sales in Canada is a good idea during the pandemic. Canadians are doing more at home, shopping online, obviously, um, more frequently, 51% are doing it more frequently, shopping online, or 35% are doing it more, ordering more products uh, or and online to be picked up in the store. Um, so lots of online activities, but actual numbers that you see here, uh, the amount that is being uh, shifted to online and uh, the degree to which people are utilizing that, obviously. Consuming foods and drinks at home. What are they doing more at home? Obviously baking and cooking, that was a huge one. Uh, food for ordering pickup, but going out to restaurants, uh, it's a, for about the same, but most less frequently, and some have not done this, uh, the most of, of all the categories here. Pretty obvious in, in that sense. Yeah, many, most intended, these are the uh, uh, types of activities that uh, they can tend to, or they intend to continue in the future. 57% uh, there, 68% have tried new shopping behavior. Uh, now this is an older study. This was from the McKinsey. McKinsey was also talked about earlier and I, I used to use them a lot, but I mean, that was back in uh, 2019 when early in the stages of COVID. That's a long, that's ancient history compared to uh, what's going on now. So you want to get a little uh, later than that. Uh, so that we're talking about May uh, of 20 or 2019 versus November of 2020, a little more uh, recent uh, that we've got there. So um, yeah, uh, so we've got to train different behaviors, um, different retail stores, different uh, websites, changing the landscape for sure. Um, uh, new digital shopping methods, uh, so and tend to continue. Uh, so that's pretty interesting as well. And so for those that are in the sticks and bricks that still want to offer those services, um, here is the concern, the percentages that 32% are concerned about that the masks and the barriers are there. That's their top priority. Cleaning and sanitation, number two, physical distancing, number three, from the uh, consumer's perspective. And again, unfortunately, that's the latest that I have for 2019. Uh, store regulations and so forth. So uh, important to know uh, what the priorities are for your potential customers coming into your sticks and bricks. The new low touch activities uh, in terms of the video uh, chat, telemedicine, curbside pickup, uh, those are interesting. So it's the blue and the light blues that are uh, important there. Um, there we go. The blues and the light blues. The bl uh, blues are using more, the light blues just started using. So you can see the infancy there, of even the video personal chat there. It was interesting to see how much it's grown, uh, although it was uh, pretty pervasive beforehand. You know, the, we can think about it. We had Skype beforehand, and now we've got Zoom, which is a huge, huge improvement over what Skype is. Uh, yeah, and so you can see here, you get different ideas and variations in terms of telemedicine. You see the, the counseling services popping up and the apps for counseling services popping up like crazy. Uh, uh, they're going uh, incredibly fast. And then we have a, a little uh, diagram here of those that are temporary versus those that are potentially here to sit, uh, stay uh, versus those that have just simply accelerated uh, in terms of they're not being newly used, but they're just used, being used more. Uh, and so you've got the physical telemedicine uh, being used more and the mental uh, telemedicine as well. But then the online fitness elements that was re uh, referred to earlier here, keeping that uh, customer engagement uh, high, uh, remote learning, uh, and then the wellness apps and so forth. So that gives you an idea of the uh, intense, the percentage of respondents that have indicated they intend to use it after COVID-19 versus the growth uh, since, uh, in, uh, since uh, COVID-19 has started here. So that's an interesting uh, diagram as well here. So one of my favorite books was this, the uh, Create the Future and, and the Innovation. This is actually two books in one. And uh, you've got really um, uh, the disruption element here. And what I'm thinking of is in this book, there was a great 
um, uh, page in here that talked about the companies that came out of recessions. So you had uh, companies like uh, IBM and a number of, let's, let me see if I can grab this here. Um, let me see if I can grab it. Can I grab it? I probably can't grab it. Here we go. Okay, so you've got companies like that came out of a recession uh, indicating the opportunities in the disruption. You've got companies such as Apple, Gillette, AT&T, Texas Instruments, 20th Century Fox, uh, IBM. Um, you've got IHOP, uh, Coors, uh, Bristol Myers, um, LexisNexis, uh, Adobe, uh, Electronic Arts. You've got a number of companies that have come out of uh, the chaos that exists. So it's not all doom and gloom when this happens. There are opportunities uh, for growth. And uh, this is a great book. So I'm just thinking there was also a talk earlier today about resiliency and what to watch out for. And so if any of these elements are involved in your business, this is what you've got to watch out for. So if 3D printing is a threat to your business, then that's on the list. It's going to coming down the pipe, so you've got to watch out for that. So there are a number of these different um, aspects of running a business that can threaten what your existing state of or your environment is. So uh, whether it's boomers, whether it's China, uh, and, and there's a whole, there seems to be a whole trend because of COVID that um, globalization is what uh, they're talking, they're talking about deglobalization. And I disagree. I think once uh, COVID has, um, has been uh, dealt with, then you'll see a return to that lowest cost. Right now, COVID has just uh, destroyed the logistics of moving goods. Uh, so, but once that uh, starts to settle down, I think you'll still see a return to the globalization, the under underlying currents of globalization of technology and making the world a smaller place is not going away. Uh, so whether it be China, whether it be Africa, who knows? Uh, but th that was, those globalization trends, I think are still going to uh, continue as opposed to a lot of people think it's gonna be deglobalization. Okay. Um, some ideas. So here are some suggestions that I use when I look at, um, oh, and wait a minute. Um, sorry, um, Nicole, I didn't ask you about the poll question. Did we get any results on the poll question? Yes, we did. Um, this was about whether or not they know about market research, right? Primary and secondary market research, right? The difference. Yeah. Right. Um, we have 10 for yes and six for no. Okay. 16 responded. Okay. Mm -hmm. 10 for yes and six for no. Okay. Pretty well, pretty close. Okay. Um, that's great. Thanks, Nicole. Um, so here are some of the um, uh, search streams that I use. The critical parts in here, obviously, market research, post COVID 19 is important, uh, the locate geography, Canada, and then the time, uh, having it 2021, 20, having it timely information is going to be important there. Uh, other things then would be expectation. Uh, again, a geography and time. Uh, and then trend tracker is really huge in terms of getting really important results. Canadian, make sure it's Canadian, make sure it's 2021 and, uh, and COVID-19, obviously you want in there as well. So those are important search strings to use in terms of getting the type of results that are gonna prove quite fruitful uh, for researching what you're doing. And not only that, so which leads me to my next poll question, um, how many people that are watching right now use Google Alerts? Uh, yes or no, uh, let me know. And so, so what you do is you take some of those search strings and you put them into Google Alerts. Uh, so it's an automated search tool that searches for those strings and brings back just information that is, has occurred that day on those topics. So quite often I use um, Google Alerts uh, uh, for instead of Google, because it's just giving me a proxy of what the most recent information is on a particular search string. Uh, so it's very powerful in that sense. So it saves me once I've got it established and they're, they're free, uh, it keeps you current on the latest trends. Um, you can get information uh, on your target market uh, and um, on your competition and uh, what's happening in your industry. 
Uh, you can, as I said, you can create as many search streams as you like, uh, which is important. Um, and it delivers uh, alerts to your, to your email on a daily basis. So it saves you having to go out and uh, search for that. What do we have for a response on that poll question, uh, Nicole? We're flipped this time. So six yeses and 10 noes. Okay, interesting. Okay, okay. We don't have uh, cross tabs to, to make some inferences about that, but that's cool. Um, all right, um, good. And so uh, you know about, good, the 10 of you know about Google Alerts and six of you don't. So uh, definitely Google Alerts is an important part as, you, as what you'll see is as you start to use that, it'll start to evolve. Your strategy will start to evolve in terms of the topics that you want Google Alerts to be uh, keeping you up to date on. And, and that was one thing that came up earlier is that uh, you want to be ahead of the game. You do not want to be falling behind the curve. So just getting your score is not going to help you stay ahead of the curve. Having search streams like this work for you will keep you ahead of the curve. Google Trends is also an important one. So Google Trends is a search tool uh, that tracks the popularity of, of topics. So for example, uh, if we, we had um, uh, pop-off wa uh, uh, wallets here, and so if we wanted to go to uh, uh, Google Trends here, um, leather wallets. So this is on Google Trends, for example, in Canada. So we have it over a five, I've picked over a five year period for wallets and we can see by month, which months are the most uh, popular uh, in here. Uh, December 3rd to 9th is important. You can see here that some behavior and then we see the, well, the pandemic. Yeah, that's the pandemic in there as September 2019. So uh, we have uh, the pandemic suppressing uh, that uh, going on here. And then we've got it by province. Uh, so the idea is that Saskatchewan is the hot spot. Uh, most of uh, the uh, searches that are going on for uh, leather wallets uh, versus BC versus Ontario and so forth. And you can play around with this in terms of uh, the past uh, hours, four hours, 12 months, whatever that might be. Uh, you can see that uh, for Canada over time. And then you've got some, some categories here. This is not such great, but there are obviously some related uh, search queries that uh, you can uh, pick for that or then uh, other related topics uh, that can help you out in that regard. So that's an example of using uh, Google Trends. Uh, I like that a lot. Uh, and then we've got, yeah. And so just to go through this by category topic related query, filters out that. Another great uh, resource uh, that I like is Think Google Canada. And as I said, that brings up some great topics. If you, uh, this morning, it brought me up some great topics. For general, necessar not necessarily specific for Canada. Sometimes they'll have specific Canadian uh, data, but just uh, really great uh, topics uh, for uh, getting an understanding of your, uh, your target market uh, for that. And that's all I've got. I think I'm a little over, uh, Nicole, am I? Uh, but uh, yeah, that's all I got. John, are you there? Can you I am, have I any uh, Q&As for me? Yeah, thanks, thanks very much for that presentation. A lot of, lot, of really, uh, lot of really great resources in there. I'm just checking if we have uh, any questions. One, one thing I'm really wondering about is when somebody's starting off there, they, they realize the value of market research and they want to start doing it, Where's sort of the best place to start? How do that? How do you go about it? Is it just Googling your uh, your marketplace, or are there specific sites that they should go to? What's sort of that first step? Yeah, Googling for sure. I mean, and also uh, come and see me <laughs> is the first recommendation. You want to come and see me because in a coaching session, because I get the oohs and ahs in a coaching session when we start going through coming up with those creative search strings to use in Google. Uh, a lot of times people will use Google and they say it gave me nothing, but they're using the wrong terms. Garbage in, garbage out uh, 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 condition is what's happening there. And so if they can use the right terms to get started and then start building up their uh, keyword inventory to create those Google alerts around, that's really, really important. Uh, I would start there for sure. And then there are other 
There are other databases as well, but you'd really want to start there to get an intuitive idea about target and target market is the first place you want to go in terms of finding out who your target market is and, and elements around that. But Small Business BC obviously is going to be a good place to start. Definitely, I, I can agree with that. Um, we've got a we've got a question here uh, from Roberto. Where can we find some insights for marketplaces like Amazon, Etsy, et cetera? Insights in terms of how to operate uh, their uh, business on those. I mean, and also uh, you've got, uh, and I think, uh, I think again, you're kind of jumping the gun. You'd want to start with your target market. Is your target market suited for Amazon? Is your target market suited for Etsy? Uh, that's critical to know because it's, you're wasting your time by going on these platforms if your target market is not going there. Uh, and as I said, Facebook is great for 65 plus people. That's great. But wait a minute, let's have a look at who your target market at, assumes a certain demographic about your target market. And of course, 99.9% .9 of the time when we ask our clients who you think your target market is, their response is everybody. And that's not true. And especially in today where specialization and we're competing against big box like Amazons and Walmarts and Costco's, would that be, it's, it's more of a bifurcation that's happening between the huge stores and the super micro custom boutiques, uh, that split, that divide is happening, that uh, it's super important then to know exactly what the preferences are about particular niches that's going to be our key in being successful in today's world of the disappearing middle class. Yeah, in yeah, the, sure. the value of determining your target market or your best customer, uh, something that I talk, talk with a lot of clients about, such a valuable thing because it aligns so many other parts of your business. And this is a yeah. perfect example of that. Uh, yeah. It aligns where you're going to be selling or where you're going to be advertising. Um, yeah. Exactly. And so, and, and not only that, but it's not enough to understand where your target, what your target market is today, but also to have those Google alerts set up. So as your target market changes, nothing's in stone. Uh, the set it and forget it idea is a recipe for disaster in today's world because things are changing at lightning speed. And so your idea is that you've got to be hooked up to these information streams that are gonna be providing you what those changes are. So you can make the adjustments on the fly. So you are not set in stone and then you'll be buried by a stone. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, sounds, that sounds exactly right. Um, I think that's, uh, that brings us to the end of our time here. So thank you, Mark, for this, for this great presentation. Lots of really interesting uh, insights there, especially at a time when market research is changing like week in, week, week out with, with all of the influences of uh, COVID-19. Variants so, and vaccines and yeah. All yeah, of those yeah. An incredibly, an incredibly uh, important time. So thanks very much for that and, uh, and really appreciate your, your talking to us today. Okay, you're welcome, John. Thanks for the great question.